I want to talk today about how you need to stop proving yourself in your career. Every day you show up to work, you got to keep trying to prove yourself. And so if you are one that you struggle with being able to be sure in what it is that you do and, you, and you're not always sure in how you need to show up in your career, this is definitely the live stream for you. I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with because you tend to find yourself not knowing um, just how to be. It's being able to find a really healthy scale of, okay, I do need to kind of show up here and show them what it is that I need to do. But at the same time, I need you to be sure in who you are. I want to go ahead and deep dive into this because I think it's really important that you allow yourself, especially when you have been in your career for a while, you allow yourself to operate in your expertise as you know that you should. And sometimes you can find yourself starting to hold back in your career because it's this, I got to make sure that I do it a certain way or I have to be sure that um, that I operate in a certain way so everybody around, um, so everybody else around me can feel like the things that I do is good. But I want to be able to remove you out of that, especially those of you guys who desire to operate in a very authentic way in your career. How you are able to, to really be really real and be you in your career and to be authentic as you desire is to get out of this mindset of feeling like you got to keep proving yourself, especially with us women. Men, black women, seriously, I know this is something that we can tend to struggle with a lot because you are finding yourself sometimes feeling like for one, you have to fight your way into rooms, right? And so when you finally get into a room, you start feeling like, okay, now it's time to do tricks and all this other stuff to stay in the room. But I want to be able to show you how to walk into rooms that, that actually want you there. And also, I want to be able to show you how once you get in the room, it's not about you having to think about what is it that I need to do to stay in the room. It's about you being able to understand, right? How is it that I need to show up as me so that I bring forth the results I need to and therefore they want me in the room. And not because of I have to be somebody that I'm not, it's because I am just being me. So let's go ahead and dive in. First of all, let's really deep dive into this whole proving mindset. When I say move away from you needing to prove yourself, I want you to think about you feeling like you have to do things, not because it's your expertise or because it's something that you want to do. You got to prove stuff because you got to prove to the people in the room you have to show them or you have to put on a show to, to let them know that you are valuable. Now, let me explain this, okay? Um, I do believe that, again, you do need to do the job that they hired you to do. But it's one thing when you're operating out of a place of I got to prove myself. It's another place when you are wanting to operate just out of who you are. And a lot of you guys have the expertise. You have the skill set. And if you just operate out of who you are, and not out of who you think you need to be. What you want, the raise, all of that is on, is on the other side of that. Just being able to just settle in your mind that I'm not going to show up here at work in this mass or me feeling like I got to be a certain way in order to be accepted by the people who work here. I am just going to show up and be me because that's enough. And the reality is it is enough. Now, this does not mean that you won't have areas of growth. We all do. We all should be trying to look and pursue into those areas where we can be great or or those weak areas, right? So I'm not saying like, hey, this is just a take it mindset, but it's more of a mindset of where you are right now, you learning how to operate in who you are and not who you think they need you to be. Right. Because this is how people start feeling lost in their career or they feel like they can't really be authentic because they feel like if you knew the real me. Right. Then you probably would not even want me here. And I tell people it's very important to be authentic because when you are authentic, that will start to attract aligned opportunities. When you are authentic, that will attract aligned opportunities. Right. And when I'm talking about being authentic, I'm not talking about you have to go to work and just share your whole life. I'm not talking about all of that because I, I still do believe that there's a time and place for everything. But I also know that when we're talking about being authentic is about you being able to operate in your expertise in a way that feels good. And you don't feel like I have to be a certain way so everybody else in the room can feel comfortable. So I want to be able to to free your mind today 
right? And stop feeling like who you are and what you have is not enough. And so, again, this is not to say don't grow. And this isn't to say don't excel. But this is to say to start like to get into the mindset of learning how to rest in you. No proving, just being. Because you get into the mode of feeling like I have to do X, Y, and Z in order to get that job or that raise or or whatever that goal is. And so what what tends to happen is you'll find yourself in this constant pursuit of feeling like I got to keep turning tricks and doing dances just to advance in my career. And you forget that you have an expertise. You forget that you are an actual asset. You forget that they hired you because your skill set solved the problem. You forget that, hey, you went through the process like everybody else did and they picked you. You forget all of that. And then in return, you start you start feeling like, OK, in, in order to get into your good graces, this is the mask that I have to wear. And how many of y'all know masks get old? I have seen people and I've worked with clients who will literally diminish their expertise because they don't want to appear too smart because they feel like if they appear too smart, their boss will feel a certain way. I have certain people who will not, I've worked with clients who will not want to even share an idea or even maybe share a view that may not be in alignment with everybody else's. It's a fear of they may think that I'm trying to start something. And so while you are in this mindset of I don't want them to think your expertise is just diminishing. Or you can even see this with the whole job search. And this is why people tend to struggle with not being able to express the value because you keep thinking that the value got to sound a certain way. And they are certain things that needs to be in place but it's not so much of you having to find the right things to say it's just all about you having to align what you already have to what they need to to the things that they need so it is a certain framework that is in that right but it's still all you but a lot of people will struggle to even express the value that they have because they keep thinking that wait a minute in order for it to be something of value it has to come out a certain way or it has to sound a certain way or or and so you go into this cycle of feeling like okay okay always thinking what you have is not enough or feeling like you always have to give more when you have more than enough so i want to be able just to kind of break that yoke off for you guys this morning as you start your week and start getting comfortable and just resting but in order to rest in you right when i say resting you meaning just be just show up and operate as you know that you can but it's hard to do that right if you have not yet sat down and got clear on who you are as of right now right and so if you do have that struggle of huh i wonder if i do this if this and this you start going down this whole path of almost second guessing yourself when it was one point in time when you knew who you was you knew the expertise that you have you understood that the job that you were in you were way qualified for you knew that at one point but what tends to happen is when you start to keep yourself in rooms that would that are that are too small for you and you get into the in the habit of keep having to shrink yourself that will make you start second guessing who you are and you start feeling as if everybody else around you has more than you and that's the complete opposite and so when you guys start work this week i want you to start your, with the right mindset and start thinking about hold on this isn't about me having to go to work and put on a show this isn't about me feeling like i gotta hop through certain hoops this is about me being able to to show up and just be and operate in my expertise the way that i know that i should right and i want you to move more into the mindset of thinking about how is it that i can improve not because you necessarily again don't have enough but it's just because i always want to strive for more why because you deserve it and so now when you start to think about what the next level in your career is it's not based upon this endless pursuit of i have to get enough now it's a pursuit of i want more not because i feel like i don't have enough it's i want more because i deserve more and that's two separate things when you're always having to be in this mindset of i gotta prove myself because i feel like i don't have enough whereas you're working to improve yourself because you want more because you deserve it and so i want to shift you from this mindset of thinking like you are always left behind or you're always two steps behind everybody else or everybody else has this whole just secret map that you don't have no my friend i don't want you to keep thinking that the next level in your career is in that next class 
I don't want you to think that the money that you want to make is in you having to do more work. I want you to get comfortable in understanding, right? That you have put in the work. Now, you guys know I'm not afraid of work. Anybody who works with me one to one, you're going to work. Why? Because you are worth the work. So I'm not saying that the way to success is no work. What I am saying is that you have to get to a point to where you realize to the point that you are in now that you have put in the work and now it's time to reap. It's time to reap. Understanding that you put in the work to reap something. You put in the work to get something back. It's not a mind, it's not a, a mindset of you having to keep just adding in the work over and over and over and over again into this black hole and you just don't think that you're going to get anything back. You literally train your mind to believe that all you are good for is just giving. And you train your mind to believe that if you do get something back, be happy with that. Even, even if it's just crumbs. Hey, at least you got something. And you train yourself to believe that in order to get what you want, you do have to go 10 times harder than everybody else. Because you train yourself to believe that the best thing about you is how much you give out. I know this is hitting home. You train yourself in a way, and sometimes you don't necessarily even realize what is actually happening. Like I'm, I'm a big component. I really believe that we build habits and your habits turn into your character. And so even myself, it's my desire and it's, it's a goal that I strive for to be self-aware of what I do so I can make sure that I build the right habits. It's very important for me to be able to be aware of just the way that I respond to things to make sure that the right habits is being built. Because if you keep responding a certain way or if you keep operating in a certain way, you train yourself, this is, this is how you are. But what tends to happen is, especially if you have been one that has been in just survival mode for a while, meaning that you are operating in a place that maybe you don't really care to be, but you're in this mode of, I have to do what I have to do in order to just survive. That's what I call survival mode. And you train yourself to be. You train yourself to be in that survival mode. And so you do not know how to operate when it's time to thrive. You don't know the mindset or how to think about yourself when it's time to move out of that mode and to move out of that, that season of survive, survive. And on the inside, you know, it's something that's saying, friend, it's, this season's almost over. It's time to shift into thriving, but you don't know how to make that switch up here. So when it's time to move from survival into thriving, you will literally you bring the same mindset, the same responses, the same thoughts, the same actions, the same trends. You bring all that over here and then you wonder, why is it that I cannot read what I know that I should read? It's because you're still operating out of a mindset of survival. And guess what? We all have had those moments where we are having to survive, having to maybe operate in a job that maybe we don't necessarily care for because guess what? The bill's got to be paid. And even in those seasons, it does not take anything from you. But it's so important to know when is it time to shift out of that mindset? Understanding the season. Hey, I have reaped, I've, I have put in the work. I have made the sacrifices. Now it's time to reap. But the question to ask yourself is, do you know when is it your season to reap? Because it could very well be your season to reap, but you will miss the season if you're still thinking that it's, it's time to just keep sowing. Praying, you've been sowing. Give yourself the permission to read. Allow yourself to be able to attract opportunities and get opportunities without thinking that, oh, I got to keep doing more and more and more and more and more and more and more. And again, that's nothing wrong with applause, but it should not be mandatory. Remember at work, I, I do want you guys to show up at work. I'm a believer even myself. I like to operate in a spirit of excellence. So I do believe that you should work. And I don't mind hard work, but I also believe you should not work just for the applause of the people around you. I don't, I don't believe that. When I think of applause, applause, and I say applause, I'm saying this, like everybody writes, oh my God, you're doing a great job. I think that that is a nice to have, but it's not a must have. And I'm the kind of person I've trained myself to not go after the applause, but I go after feedback. Two different things. I am more drawn to what is it that I need to maybe adjust or get, or get right rather than just the applause. Because sometimes you, you can get you can get caught up in the applause, okay? 
And so now this applause has turned into something that you need. Now the, the applause or the acceptance of the people around you has now turned into you need to be validated. But there will be seasons in your career where there are no applauses, where you are putting in the work and nobody at work is even there to even acknowledge what is being done. There are times in your career where it will be silent, it will be dark. And even in those dark seasons, you got to know how to applaud yourself. And you have to know, even in those seasons where there is no applause, it's like, oh, girl, you know, when it's none of that, you got to be able to still operate and be sure of yourself, even when it's silent. And even when it's silent, you got to learn how to applaud yourself. Even in those seasons, it's crucial to know, even in those silent seasons, how are you going to keep yourself going? But for some people, the only thing that keeps them going is the applause of the people around them. But what happens at work when you ain't getting all of that no more? Why? It could be because the people that you work with, sometimes they do, like sometimes they are jealous. Not all the time, but there are times. So it could be times you where you could be killing it at work and you won't get that from them. Why? Because they secretly wish they had what you had. And so in your mind, you keep thinking there's something that you're doing wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. The fact is you are doing great and it's making the other people around you feel small. So what you'll stop doing is stop doing your expertise and stop thriving. And you will literally pull back because you feel like there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You're on the right track, but you need the applause of others to make you feel validated. But I want to be able to teach you how to be able to operate in your career and be sure of what you have and to be silent and you still be sure. Right. And you're able to look back at your expertise and you are able to get feedback from the people that you work with. And guess what? It don't take anything from you. You are able to maybe hear things about you that may need to change a little bit or be kind of, you know, something, something's got to be tweaked. And you'll find yourself being able to hear those things. And guess what? It takes nothing from you because you have come to a place to where you realize and you understand who you are and you understand that all feedback is not a way to to allow you to feel like there's something wrong with it. You understand that, hey, I'm going to use this feedback as a building stone to push me forward, even if you feel like that feedback did not come from the right place. So as you're able to operate in your career and as you're able to just be, you find yourself starting to attract opportunities. You'll find yourself being able to attract opportunities, not because you are just trying, 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 trying super hard. It's because you are simply just being and you are allowing your expertise to speak for itself. You are allowing your results to speak for itself. You are allowing your actual just confidence to speak for itself because you understand that I am not in a race with anybody else except myself. And the reason why I say that you will find yourself in a race with just yourself is because you understand I don't have anything to prove to anybody except myself. Because you should you should be in a um, in a race to just be better and not for the sake of a job, not for the sake of a job title and not for for the sake of just pay, but because you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to surpass things that you never thought that you could. You owe it to yourself to show yourself, hey, I was able to get something that I didn't even think was possible. So this is why I said, stop proving yourself and start building your career. Think about it. When you build something, right? You get to choose what you use to build it. When you are proving in your career, you rob yourself of that because now all of the different, Because and, and, and I want to use an example about just building a house, right? When you get set to have a house built, you choose the wood, the floor, the walls, the paint. You do that because why? You, you have something that needs to actually be built. You get to do that. But when you prove yourself, you will rob yourself of all of that because now it is no longer about what you want. It's about what is it that I have to do to make the people around me believe and to think that what that that the things that I do or even the way the way that I show up I got to make sure that it's just right for them and so what you do is you rob yourself of the power to be able to build with what you want to build with this so this is what I teach my clients I help them to get deep and to get clear on let's move away from this I got to prove myself 
let's move away from this. I'm afraid to make a mistake. Let's move away from I got to make sure the next move is exactly right and don't anything go wrong because if something go wrong, then that could mean to everybody else that I didn't know. Let's move away from that. A lot of people are stuck in their career, right? Do not want to move away because they feel like I got to make sure that this next step is exactly right so I can prove to everybody else that that I knew, right? But it's not about that. So you, you'll find yourself being stronghold with, I got to make sure that every step I take is right. And you don't give yourself room to grow. You don't give yourself grace. You're super hard on yourself because you told yourself that the way that I can appear that I'm worth something is if everything that I do is perfect. And what happens is, is you rob yourself of the opportunity to be able to learn who you are. You rob yourself from the opportunity to be able to get to know you and who you are in this season. Because now it is not about you being able to learn who you are in this season. It's about I got to do everything right so, so everybody else around me can think that I'm sure. Just because you make a mistake does not mean that you are not sure. It just means that something needs to be tweaked. It just means that there was probably some information in there that you just didn't have. This, this can also show up in work. You're afraid to ask for any new assignments, any new anything. Because no, because I can't take a risk or a chance that I may not get this thing right. Remove yourself from that. Like remove yourself from this whole pressure of feeling like, Everything got to be perfect, 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 perfect. It was a lot of my mistakes that I made led me to my greatest victories. A lot of them, the mistakes that I made gave me the best wisdom and understanding. You know, I have clients that will say, or, or even people that's not my clients, like, oh my God, listen, you sound like you are in my head. Maybe because I've been there. And especially you guys that are wanting to either move into more lead roles or you're already operating in one and you may have to have teams that you lead. This is how you're able to connect with the people on your team. Not, not about how smart you are, but it's about you being able to say, hey, I thought the same way. Hey, I struggled with the same things. Hey, I had the same self-doubt. So now you are able to connect with the people on your team through the mistakes that you made and not just how smart you are. And this is why people who lead teams will find themselves being able to, they struggle with being able to, to really connect with the people on their teams because you're just trying to prove how smart you are and you're not really showing them your whole human side, right? It's so important to move yourself away from feeling like you have to be able to show up perfect and primed and primed every single time because you rob yourself from the opportunity of being able to learn from mistakes and you rob yourself from the opportunity to grow because you keep thinking that you've got to do everything perfectly. Who told you that? Take that pressure off. Don't think about having to prove, but think about what are some ways that you can improve, not for the sake of others, but for the sake of you. Because when you start to pour back into you, and you start to fill back up your cup and you start to serve yourself, now you can serve the people around you in excellence because you have now become sure of who you are. So now when you at work, there is no spirit of just competition. There is no spirit of feeling like they do more than me. All of that stuff is gone. Why? Because you have been able to take the time to get sure, sure in yourself. It's so important, guys. And I wanted to do this live stream because I want you to start this week off right. Go into your job. Start your week off knowing I'm not coming in here to prove nothing to you guys. This is a, this is not about me proving nothing. This is about me building. And you, it is impossible to build something while you are trying to prove something. Impossible. Yes, get better at your skill set. Yes, grow. I'm all, I'm all about that. I'm all about growth. But as you're growing towards something, as you are, you know, being able to do the work, the work is about you being able to, one, prove to yourself, and two, is more about you being able to shift from what's next, not you trying to keep trying to sustain what you have now. And that is what, when you prove yourself, that is what it ties you to. It ties you to what you do now, and it keeps you in this chokehold, and you are tied to what you do now, because the only way that... You can even move towards what's next is when you're building, right? So ask yourself, what are some ways in your work that you can show up and be more sure in yourself? It's so important, not just in the whole career fulfillment, 
career advancement aspect, right? Because, you know, I, I am a career coach. So a lot of the things that I teach is related around that. But it's so much more than that. It's about you being able to take off all of these limitations. It's really about you feeling like every time you move on that you got to start over because that is what robs your confidence when you keep feeling like you have to start over. Friend, you don't. You are in a phase to where you're having to build something. And sometimes you will find that the things that you have built it with, that wasn't right. And sometimes you'll find yourself having to take off stones or blocks or wood. And you'll find yourself having to start to build that area with something else. But even in those moments, it does not mean that you start over. Again, you just may have to tweak some things. Because what would allow you to attract the opportunities you want, whether in your career or your life, first of all, is you being able to understand and believe that you deserve them. You have to be able to first believe that you deserve the opportunities or the career or the job that you want. That's number one. And I, and I tell my clients all the time, I'm like, I cannot believe for you. I can't. I can give you the tools. I can give you the strategies. I can even guide you along the way, but I cannot make you believe you have to do that your own self, right? But this, this, this all comes back to you understanding what you are training yourself. I talk to clients all the time, especially them that, that they are in the process of they really need to get clear on what's next for them or, or even if they're wanting to like find a new job and things of that sort. People, most people struggle with the things that don't matter. Most people struggle with the things that don't matter. Resume stuff, LinkedIn, job board. They're like a lot of people, these, these are the, the questions that they want to know first. I'm not saying that they don't matter at all, but in the whole grand scheme of things, they're not that huge of a deal as people think they are. And they don't realize if they get other things right, all of that other stuff is easy. One of the, the things that most of my clients struggle with Alicia, I don't know how to express the value. They know, hey, I do good work. I show up. I've been able to, I've got receipts of other things that I've done in my past. But when it comes to actually talking about it, they struggle with it. And nine times out of 10, I want to be bold and say with my chest, 10 out of 10, but I'll say nine times out of 10, it's because they are thinking that they got to show up in a certain way. So it's not a question of how something needs to be expressed is more about, I got to make sure that I do this right. And there's nothing wrong with you wanting to do something right. It's about what is right in your eyes. And so that's what a lot of my clients struggle with is just not being able to really talk about the, the things that they do in a way to where they feel like it'll sound good. But when I start to work with my clients and I start to really deep dive with them and I really start to, you know, explore their accomplishments with them and their results, a lot of times they are not sure in their results or their successes. And it's like, it's one thing to be aware of something and something else to be sure of it, right? Because I have clients that they can look back and say, yeah, I've done some things. I've done some things that were good. You know, I've got receipts. But to be sure in it and to own it and to walk into it, not sure. Why? Because they needed somebody else to come back and just validate that for them. And the truth is, a lot of these companies, unfortunately, not all, but a lot of them, are, they will not do that for you. I told somebody, uh, not a post the other day, I said, your employer knows how valuable you are. They just don't want you to know that. Because if they start really allowing you to see the impact that you really make, now you have leverage. And a lot of them, they don't want you to use that leverage with them. So they'll give you just enough applause to keep you overworking yourself because you think, oh, now, because I'm doing all this extra work, now they find me valuable in me doing all this extra work. And so they will allow you to do enough just to keep you overworking yourself, just to keep you a yes man, but they will not fully allow you to see the real impact you made because now you have leverage. And I don't think they do this, well, I don't think some do it with a heart to deceive or to, you know, and I said some because some, some do, but not all. I do like to give grace to some, right? <laughs> but I think that I think a lot of times it's just because the 
culture wasn't built that way. It wasn't built to build up the people that work there. It wasn't built that way. It was not built that way. It wasn't. So it's not that they're doing it to try to deceive you or, to, you know, or, you know, it's some kind of game they run it. It's because the culture was not set up for that. So if if the work environment was not set up to allow the employees to be aware of the true impact that they have, and they will allow their employee to actually just, you know, leverage that, they, they don't know how to do that. But what they do know how to do is to keep you overworking yourself because they were built to make them successful. So when they see the results that you bring forth, they don't see that as a man, like I really want to help this employee grow and, and, and mature and to make more money. They only see it as man, this person is able to, to get us the results that we want. So let's keep pulling more out of it because their focus is their success, not yours. Right. So when you understand this, now you understand how, how you need to show up at work. You understand, OK, I need to be aware of what it is that I'm actually putting out versus what it is that I am actually getting back because they are not worried about that. All they're worried about is gimme, 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 because that's just the way that they were built. Yes, I agree that there are some that are deceitful. Like I just said that, but I will, but but I won't be bold enough to say everybody because I don't know that. I really do believe that there are some em, 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 employers, like even though it may not be built in their structures, I do believe that when you come with the information, that they will respond to it. But it's more of a you get what you ask, not what you deserve, and that is just corporate altogether. You get what you ask for, friend, not what you deserve. And when you keep that mindset of you think that I'll just get a raise because I've been doing a lot of work and, and you don't put forth the action to have the conversation, you're going to get just that more work. When you don't ask for what it is that you need and you feel like I'll just do more work in order to get what I want, all you're going to get is more work. But when you start to be proactive and start to have the conversations that you know that you need to have, then you'll start, right? But in corporate, friend, it is you get what you ask for, not what you deserve. Again, because that is just how the environment was created. Like I worked in HR over 10 years. I've worked on both sides. I've hired also talent side as well. Like the actual structures, how they create 99% of their policies and structures is to help you to be more of an asset to them, not to yourself, not to your overall career. The way they're set up is to make you a better asset for them. And a lot of times they ain't got that in place, right? But the goal is we want to take Susie in and make sure that we can get everything that we can get out of her to make us more successful. That's what it is. In most cases, they don't ask you about your goals. Or if they do, it's very... In most cases, they, they are not trying to take action to make sure that you reach your goals. But their goals, friend, they'll have meetings at the 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 meetings to make sure that their goals are met. But yours, okay, oh, okay, oh, that's cute, okay. But the goals for you in your career, that's not top of mind for them. And guess what? It's okay. It's business. But that should let you know you need to be concerned about your goals and your successes. And that needs to be top of your mind, right? So I want you, but again, when you're proving yourself, impossible. <laughs> when you are proving yourself, it is impossible to keep your goals first. Mm -mm, no, you don't have time to. But when you are building in your career, absolutely. When you are in a place to where you build in your career, your goals is what decides what moves you need to make, not what they need. When you are building it in your career, you make strategic steps because you know that this step needs to lead me down to where it is that I desire to be, not to what they want. Don't make your career decisions based on what they need. Absolutely not, because they sure don't think about you. They think about what they need in order in order to succeed. So your goals, right? Your steps need to be based upon your goals. But it does take a level of boldness, right? It does take a level of you being sure in yourself. It does take a level of you being able to trust in yourself and, and understand this. 
right? It does take a level of you being able to understand and realize that you are worthy of your goals. It does say that. So I, I want to do this live stream to encourage you to be bold, to make those bold moves. Even right now, I feel like, Alicia, I'm in a, in a position right now, I'm just really not happy. You can still very well be, be bold in a career that you're not 100% happy with. Why? Because that boldness needs to be built off of what you are putting into place and the, and the action steps that are being made to move you towards better. But it's hard to be bold when you are in a place that you know you don't want to be in and you ain't doing nothing about it. It can definitely be hard. Right. And so I want to give you guys something to think about it as you go into this new week. I want you guys to start to really think about have you been proving or have you been able to build? Because that is really, really important. And if you start to notice that there are areas in your career where maybe you have tried to prove yourself more than, than build, now you know this is the mindset shift that I need to make. And that is for one, I am an asset. They hired me for a job because they felt like I could do the job. And in those areas, I may feel like I need to prove myself. I need to focus on how I can improve so I can build my career on my terms. Because once you start to build your career, you'll start understanding and realizing that you have options. You'll start understanding and realizing that there are some conversations that you need to have that you should have had a long time ago. You understand now it's time to get clear on where you are and where you stand with them right now. And you will remove yourself from this passive approach, right? And you'll start to really take control of your career and understand that you need to dictate the way that this thing goes, not them. Because this is what happens. You will allow them to have so much control and so much say over your career that when they drop you like a hot potato out the blue, you feel lost because you have not had your hands around your career in so long. And now you don't even know what your career is because you have not held the power in it for so long. If you want to grow in your career, if you want to be able to advance in your career, you set those terms. And so if you do ask them for a raise or to advance, and they say, no, you get feedback. Okay, what is it that I need to do? What are those gaps? And don't allow them to fluff you around and throw these vague answers out. Oh, no, what is it that's stopping me from being able to get what it is that I want? Now you move into the, era, the, the phase of improving. And now you're able to see if the role that you have now, if that can move you more towards towards your goals or is it going to remove you away from it because a lot of times you ask for um, advancement in your career position or you ask for a raise they don't have a, an answer for you because for one it's just not it's just not on their mind don't let them keep throwing you around with it's not in the budget if it's not in the budget for a raise let's talk about a stipend let's talk about an actual bonus let's talk about something and if it's not in the raise in july let's circle back again at the end of September and revisit this. Get comfortable with getting clear. You being able to ask these questions is not you being pushy. It is not you being bossy. It is not you being greedy. It is about you understanding when is it time to reap. And you got to be able to know that if the, if the job you have now, are they going to give you that harvest? If not, all you're doing is working to help them meet their goals. It's you being able to own the fact that, hey, I need more information from you so I know what moves to make. So if I ask for an advancement or raise and the answer is no, I need to know, is the problem me or you? That's the overall scope of it. Because if they can't give you a clear outline, if they can't give you a clear improvement plan in writing of what are those core gaps that need to be filled is not you, friend, it's them. And if you sit in a career, if you sit in a role and you know that they won't give you what you, not just what you want, but what you deserve, it's on you. It's no longer on them. It's not their fault that you have not grown. It's yours because they showed you who they were and you did not believe them. But this is why I'm so big on having conversations. Having conversations and being able to get direct feedback and get solid feedback is going to allow you to see them for, for who they really are. And this is not a live stream to say, hate your boss, but this is a live stream to say, hey, 
is my current position in alignment with my goals, right? This is allow you to see, okay, hold on, wait a minute. Is it me or is it them? That's why this, you know, I, and again, it's not to place blame on you, but I, what I am saying is that you got to begin to hold yourself accountable to when they have showed you who they are and you decide to do nothing about it. It's not on them no more, friend. It's on you, right? And so this is going to help you to move away from this. I got to prove myself to, I need to be asking questions around here. I need to be having meetings. I need to start seeing what is the growth plan for my role. I, I need to start seeing how far is my success on their list. I need to see how much have they even thought about you? Are you even top of mind? And I know that it, it can be a little scary to have these conversations because you may not know what, what the outcome or their mindset is about you. That's normal, right? But what should drive you is not what they think. What should drive you is what you need. So in shorter words, do it scared. I don't care if you're scared, just do it because you need this. And when you have conversations, you can take the information from those conversations and start to make the moves and the choices that's going to put you in a better position. If you are in a job search, stop thinking so much about being this perfect fit and think about what you need. What is it that you need? What is the environment that you need in order to thrive in? Now, I'm not saying not to go through the interview process and sell yourself, but baby, just as much as you trying to sell yourself, they need to be trying to sell themselves to you too, okay? Because you're about to invest time, resources, skills into them. Just like they are investing in you, you are investing in them. So just as they expect you to sell yourself, you need to be, you need to expect them to sell themselves. And how you get them to sell themselves is to ask them the right questions. Ask them the right questions. All it is, what's the culture like? <laughs> what is it that you want to know about the culture? Is it the actual diversity side of it? Is it the work-life balance side of the culture? Is the is it the employee engagement? Baby, that's a vague word, right? But once you get clear on what you need in order to thrive, and you start getting clear on what does my environment need to look like in order for me to thrive, you don't have problems being able to ask those tough questions. And I say tough because a lot of, and I say tough because for them, it can be a tough question for them, probably because ain't nobody ever dug that deep, but they ask you tough questions. Why can't you ask them tough questions? Again, this is not no dictatorship. This is not no you some kind of beggarly person on side the work on, on side the road holding up a sign saying, no, you are somebody with an expertise. You are somebody that's can solve a problem for them that can save them thousands of dollars or it could allow them to make hundreds and thousands of dollars. You are not some beggarly, no. You are somebody with a valuable skill set. So when you sit down with them and you talk to them, don't be afraid to ask them questions. When I say tough questions, I just mean like not these old fluffy, What what's your management style like? about what their style as how is it how is it that they deal with conflict about how is it that they give back feedback and for all of you people that's thinking well what if i ask these questions and they don't want to hire me hallelujah thank you lord because if they don't want you asking questions now when they hire you they ain't gonna want you asking no questions so let's go ahead and weed out all these people <laughs> that is not in alignment with you if they don't want you asking questions through the interview process they, they, they're not going to want you asking questions when they hire you. But you should want to find a employer that welcomes questions. That when you are sitting in that seat, they'd be like, man, I love the way that she thinks. I love how detailed she is. I love how she likes to just, you know, investigate. We need that. So what you think is, oh, I don't want to come off too much. They see that as a jewel they see that as a gem they see that as valuable that's the that's the employers that you need to be trying to look for ones that don't think you're too much no she's exactly what we need we need somebody that's not afraid to give a little pushback because not because they want to be smart but because they truly desire to serve in excellence with their expertise that's who you need to work for. For all the things that you think is too much or for, for all these little areas that you feel like, oh, I don't know, they, they see that as valuable. 
that is who you need to work for. And that is who you deserve to work for. And you have to know that. Because trust me, if you're not asking the right questions on these job interviews, I can guarantee you're not asking the right questions in your relationships. And that's a whole different live stream. And I'm not even about to get on it. I want to remove you from the, I got to do whatever I have to do in order to get this into, what is it that I need, right? I want to move you into, I need to find a, a space to work in that is going to honor what I needed. Not because you're just, you know, entitled. It's because, you know, look, if you take care of me, I'm going to take care of y'all. Because now when you're able to operate at work and you find yourself being able to be paid the money you think that you should be being paid, you feel good. And when you feel good, you bring forth better results. And when you feel good, you desire to help more and to good. Why? Because they are serving you. So if you do want to schedule a call with me, schedule a call with me. So we're able to identify where you are now, what changes that you need to make. Okay. Um, you can go to aliciaperkins.me slash discovery aliciaperkins.me slash discovery and schedule a one-to-one -one call with me. So we're able to get clear on where you are now and what are those next steps for you to take. Okay. So I will see you guys. Bye y'all.